Okay, hello everybody and welcome to this morning's event, which is being led by Adriana Braga all the way from Brazil um, and is going to hopefully teach us some things about social networks and marketing. So Adriana, over to you. Oh, thank you so much, Sarah. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here and um, I hope that we can talk about marketing. So I brought a presentation. We're gonna do something like, um, we have three hours here. So let me see if I can, if you guys see my presentation. Yeah, that's come up on the screen. And let me just put the present mode because it's, So first of all, yes, I'm Brazilian. And so if we have any questions about like um, some words or some things that you can't really understand, you can ask me and I'll, I'll try to, to translate it um, more precisely because some words can, can be lost in translation. So, um, yeah, it's, it's coming up. Are we good? Does everybody see the presentation? It's just loading the picture. Okay. There we go. Okay, now we're good. So um, art marketing and social networks, I think it's, um, it's a subject that everybody's asking nowadays, like nowadays, so, oh yeah, so I have a presentation and I thought we could be like, in the middle of the presentation, you can stop me and ask whatever you want, but um, we'll be like two hours of presentation and then one hour of, um, of questions or two hours and a half. And I'm, if I'm talking like very fastly, please stop me and tell me if you're not understanding. I'm gonna try to, I'm gonna start, by presenting myself, right? <laughs> My name is Adriana Braga. I work in our market for um, approximately 10 years, producing independent exhibitions, uh, participating in national and international fairs. Um, I worked with collectors, I had a gallery, I had a, a fair, um, it was uh, independent arts fairs, and we had like a for in the Latin America, we have a lot of independent spaces. So I am the founder of the Encounter of Independent Spaces. And I have, um, I have a method of a strategic planning for artists, where I teach artists how to plan their career. And that's why I'm doing the, this, this talk about social network and marketing, because it's it has been like a very um, important, um, uh, important sector of the artist career. So for, to talk about marketing, right? We have to start at the main period, like uh, the art market can be divided in two main periods, like the patronage period where the works were our, oh, oh, our fresco and um, the art was commissioned by by by. Oh, I don't have problem. I goes out. No. Any practical questions? Just tell me. Okay. Thank you, Sarah. So, Bia, what's happening with your video? Because oh, it, don't worry about it. Don't worry. Don't be. So we have the patronage period where the um, where the artist was actually just a worker and the art wasn't really um it wasn't owned by the artist but it was owned by the people who hired the artist and we have the market period where we have the emergence of collectors and they have the pro uh, the production of mobile artworks so the artwork um, becomes the artist a, the, the artist becomes owners of his own artwork. And why is this is this is this important? Because when 
the artist owns his own artwork. He has to be um, like an interpreter, an interpreter, entrepreneur of his own artwork. He has to be, he, he's, he's his boss. And so he has to look at all sectors for that artwork to circulate and to distribute this artwork. So seeing as we're in the market period after, let me just, uh, nowadays we have like, this is, this is all the fairs. I think they are all the fairs from the art newspapers that we had this year that we are gonna have this year. So it's like, I think it's like 50 fairs. We're not thinking about exhibitions, uh, auctions, um, BNAs, uh, festivals, and everything that can be inside that. What happened to the market since 2010, we grown a lot. So nowadays we have a lot of opportunity. We have more artists, we have more information and your, your art has to be seen. Because if, I don't know, if in the patronage period we have like 10 artists uh, and like the, the dukes and churches could, could, could choose from those artists, now we have like a thousand artists and we don't have and a lot of information so that people can't know what uh which artists to choose right we have an, a consumer of course we have to talk about this new consumer that is coming in and has a lot of more information about what is art about what is um i think in um 1970s like before a little bit 1960s um we had like the gallerist as this um this person that understand understood about art and that took and, and, and led collectors to good artists. Nowadays, the collectors are researching, we have internet, we have like more information. So to, it, it won't be like, um, um, I'm sorry. So for the collectors to buy artists, they, they need to have their, they don't need to have all the information, but they need to like value the artist and, understand something more about the art. I, I tell my, my, my students, it's not about attending a person, it's about selling it. It's about knowing what the values are, knowing what, um, what a person is going to understand or how, how this artwork is gonna represent her or inspire her. And so the person will buy artwork. But when we talk about market, art marketing or Oh, uh, uh, estimated numbers of how many there are for 40,000 museums in the world right now, it's at, at around 20,000 galleries, 1,400 auctions, 10,000 art consultants, 6,000 art collectors who spent over 10,000 year on art. Um, this research was on Google Maps and telephone direction and other data. So nowadays we have a lot a lot of artists, a lot of museums, a lot of galleries, and you have to stand out. And if you and if you think that your artwork, if you put it on, um, like ten years ago, I'm gonna say here in Brazil, all right. Um, ten years ago, we could do like an exhibition and send invitations. I don't know if you guys are from that 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 time, but like ten years ago, we sent invites, like physical invites. So. We could send invites and the people would sh just show up. Nowadays, they have like a lot of things going on and they won't show up. So we have not to only to be in social media or sending, but we have to have a relationship with these people because there are a lot of artists. Um, we, we, we're inside a festival that we know that there are a lot of, um, there are a lot of talks, there are a lot of presentations, there are a lot of exhibitions. So. How, how we only have 24 hours we still have we, we still only have 24 hours how are the people going to choose what what is more important how are they going how they're going to choose what they're going to see that's where we come from marketing so what is so now these artists have to stand out and be seen i'm sorry 
Nowadays, for artists to stand out and be seen, they need to have a marketing strategy to create awareness, generate interest, and consequently sell their work. <coughs> because we're going to talk about marketing, but we're going to talk about strategy also. It's not, um, marketing is not only show their work, publicize their work, distribute their work, but know what you want to show and how you want to show it also. We're going to talk about that. So what is marketing? I got like um, a big vision of, of what is marketing. So marketing is the process of exploring, creating, delivering value to meet the needs of a target market in terms of good services. What, what does that mean? If you are, if you are an artist and, um, oh, I'm sorry. If we are in the art market, we have to have a professional a professional image and we have to deliver what our target audience wants and who are our target audience they can be collectors they could be clients they can be, be um, museums director they can be gallerists uh, so art marketing is not only for artists that are in the galleries or artists that are independent it's just like for everybody and actually it's for not only for artists but for all the agents inside the industry. So potentially including selection of target audience, selection of certain attributes or, or things to emphasize the advertising, designing of products and packaging. What is design of products for, for, for art? Uh, looking for your presentation, understanding how you present your work. This is in the, your portfolio, in your website, and physically in the gallery, uh, in an art fair, all of this is gonna be marketing um, and packaging to attract buyers, defining terms of sales. So marketing you're always, is also defining how you're gonna sell your work, for what price and how the market looks. Um, it's, I, I think we have like this, um, this, uh, legend of the lone artist and how he just stays in the, in the in the studio and is also working and we don't think about how he's going to present the work or how he's going to how he's going to price it how he's going to sell it how he's going to um, bring people to see their work how he's going to attract more people so all of this has to do with marketing actually we've always done marketing it's just we've uh, always done marketing like from Andy Warhol to from Van Gogh to Andy Warhol but now we have to think about it more strategically because if we just like do every, anything that that's happening we won't we won't target our audience and we won't sell and we won't be seen so defining terms of sale such price discount warranty return policy Product placement, what is product placement? Product placement in media with people who believe influence on buying habits or others. Um, this is probably when we think about putting our, our work in a collection or in a museum. So it will value over time. Hmm. And stereotype drives, exactly. Um, agreement with retails. So agreement with, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, people. <coughs> the presentations. Whilst Adriana just is sorting out her um, presentation, <laughs> Feel free to use the chat if you have any comments, if any of this resonates with you. It's always really interesting to have that kind of um, behind the scenes chat going off as well. Um, just hearing like people's comments on, on how they're finding these so far. Um, back to you, Adriana. I think they're shy, but <laughs> if, as long as the presentation, they'll they'll uh, comment more 
sell agreements with retailers, with galleries, with um, people who sell your work, um, or maybe a, a local store that sells your work, or maybe a marketplace. So, <coughs> I'm sorry. It's really dry here. And this week I've, I've been, yeah. So uh, marketing is typically done by the person who's selling it, which is the artist. Oh, but I don't sell my work. The gallery sells my work, but you sell your work to the gallery. So the marketing has to be done by you. I think in, I don't know, um, in lots of places, not here, but we usually talk about marketing and sales together because there's no marketing without sales and then there's no sales without marketing. So for to be a more objective, we're gonna talk about the four Ps uh, according to Philip Kotler. Does anybody know Philip Kotler? Is, is it new for anyone here? It's new. This, it's new for you. Never heard of him, okay. So Philip Kotler is like the Pope of marketing. I think he's English, he's English. So he um, divided marketing in four Ps. Actually after he'll, he'll like um, uh, defining seven Ps, but I'll, I'll take the four Ps first, then we'll talk about the other Ps. So Philip Kotler said that marketing has to be, um, has to be divided in product, that includes quality of design, features, packaging, and cost, competitor's price, and placement, place, right? Includes distribution channels, platforms, websites, and other presence like physical location, inventory, and delivery, and promotion that includes branding, content marketing, advertising, searching, influencer relations, social media, PR, and voice sales. So if we take these four, these four Ps, we'll, we'll look at what marketing really is, like for like in, in the essence of marketing. And I'm just gonna go through the Ps so we can understand. So what is product? Product will be the artist and their work so when you're selling, you're not selling, you're not selling only your work, but you're selling your vision. You're selling yourself as an artist. And I all, I'll, when I think about products, I really think about like the bio and the statement, like what is your history and what is your mission here as an artist and as your work. So um, a lot, uh, a few questions when we talk about products it's like what does your work express what is your story as an artist what do you look for like what 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 do you search for what what's your research what's your narrative how does um how does the work the work i'm sorry how does the work different from the others is there a concept what is it how does it change the status quo um there's a, a marketing guru that says, um, his name is Seth Golden, that says that anything that met, um, any idea that materializes, it changes the status quo. So how does your work change what we have seen from history? And why do you need to, to answer those questions? Because when you answer those questions, you know the difference from your, your artwork from the others. This will help you marketing, mark, market your art. This will help you uh, take your message um, to other people that will value the same thing. If we only put like our work, like this is a, um, um, a glass. Ah. Uh, yeah, this is a glass. <laughs> this is a... Um, this is a glass and what is the difference? What, if I, if I just sell it as like uh, a glass with water, I won't sell anything because everybody, you, you just, uh, you, you sell it as, um, 
a commodity. So if you sell like, no, it's a glass made by, by me and I had to, to have a, a residence and I, there I talked to a monk and the monk told me that I had to have, I had to make a series of glasses and that will give a story and probably it will give it will attribute value to it. So when we talk about product, we need to talk about um, what your work actually is, the story of your work, and how you can um, and how you can deliver your vision or your message through the work. So you're gonna think about your bio, you're gonna think about your statement. And I like you to think like five arguments from five different people, from five different perspectives of how you talk about your work. And that, and that will give you what is the essence of your work. Not only that you paint abstract, that you do expressionism or abstract painting or <coughs> photography. What do you do um, beyond the photography? What are you actually talking about? What is your vision? What, do you, what is your message? And that is gonna be what your product is. Because when we put it like in marketing, like, oh, products and place. And this, when you know it, when, when you understand about what, what your product is, you can write about your work in, in, another, in another sense. And you could present your work in another sense because you know what is the context of your work and the significance, the significance of it. So that will be um, for, for products. Do, do we get it? Okay. You guys are too quiet. I need, really, I need like some interaction. <laughs> it totally makes sense to me. And it seems really obvious now that you've said it, that the actual thing that you're selling isn't necessarily the object, but that the kind of idea or the narrative behind it. I just don't think I thought of it like that before. So I'm learning lots. Okay, thanks. It's really, <laughs> it's really hard to sort of toot your own horn and face to face, I could possibly say, hi, look in your eye, you look in my eye, we talk the talk and we get, you know, we make a connection. But in the virtual world, it's not quite the same. And, and I know it's just grasping how you can be confident enough or you want to be out there enough to, to present yourself to the world when you're not used to doing it. That's the hard thing. Yeah. yeah. No, I understand exactly. You're not used to it. We're not used to it, right? We, I, I wasn't born in in in, in technology. Like we, we weren't born used to it. But um, I think it's it's um, when we start working on others' perspectives and on how we're gonna uh, show your work or how we're gonna talk about the work. And how we can, I think even when you when you write a lot about the work, you can understand how you're gonna um, take this connection because all the, the social networks, and we're gonna talk about this later, but the social networks are always a conversation between you and the audience. And yeah, if you look in the eye and how can, if we don't have like the eye to eye contact, how do we express um, by video, by um, writing, or by, or yeah, by video, by writing, or by voice. So I think it is a challenge, but I think when you you get what what you want to say, the essence of what you want to say, you can bring all of the all all of these connections and try not try you can achieve like uh, a good narrative for your work and for people to understand your work, for your message to get across. 
Deborah is saying it's a hard part is selling the self as a part of the story. If it's just the works easier. So yeah, yeah, I think it's not, it's not selling you. It's selling um, a, I, I know, I know everybody wants to know how things are created and everybody wants to know how the creator thinks. So your story is going to talk about that. It's going to say how you had this idea or what experiences provided that, that artwork, that idea that you materialize into artwork. So it's not actually selling yourself, but understanding how your story, how your experiences brought you to this, to this, um, to this point where you made your work. And I think it's a process also. It's not like everybody's gonna get out of here and like just have like a lot of narratives about the work and show everything. I think it's a, it's a process of understanding. Um, it's like when you put sugar in a coffee. I don't know if anybody takes sugar on coffee, but <clears throat> the first time you put sugar on coffee, maybe it was too, it was too sweet. And then you put like um, half, half, uh, half a spoon and then you put like um, a, a smaller spoon and then you understand how you take your coffee. Then you put some milk. So it's a process. We're going to experience it and we're going to understand. So when are, and am I talking about myself? When am I talking about work? When does this is, when is it relevant to talk about an experience? But, um, I understand that it's uh, first it's difficult then after you you get used to it so after after product after we think about the product after we think about the essence of our message what the vision what we're going to what what we're going to what we're looking for what is our mission we're going to about oh this is my presentation we're going to talk about price so as I told you, part of marketing is thinking about price. So you'll you'll think about how will you sell? Like, is it going to be series? Is it going to be commission? Is it a single work? Is it a unique work? What are your market? What are the market values? Like, it doesn't. Your work does not work out of context. We have a context. We have a market. We have <coughs> we have people. Um, other artists and a market price. So what are the market values? How are the prices of other artists? Uh, what discount is, or how is the discount practice? What practice of discount is offered in the market? All of this, thinking about this price, it's gonna think also about your, your audience. Like who buys your art? Where is it offered? Well, we're gonna talk about this after. So price is, all about how you're gonna sell. And this has to have like a market research because most people don't think about, most artists don't think about price without the market. And we have to think that we, we understand, we, we um, function inside a market with values, with discounts, with uh, discount practice, with um, series commission and um, what is gonna be the difference between all of our work, our price work, price of our work. <clears throat> so place is the third P. <coughs> where does your audience, where does your audience look for your artwork? So where would you look for this kind of artwork? Where are the art other artists sell their work? Where are the buyers? for this particular artwork. So when we talk about place, we're gonna talk about galleries, we're gonna talk about fairs, we're gonna talk about marketplaces, we're gonna talk about where you wanna show your work and we're gonna talk about social networks. Like where in the market now do people look for your work? Like nowadays, where do you sell your work? Or where could you sell your work? <laughs> Sorry. Oh, where necessary not necessarily where 
you all, you already show your work, but where can you show, show your work? So I, told, I said, galleries, your own website and how we're gonna put traffic on it. This is a strategy we're gonna talk about later. Uh, your site, your gallery, uh, exhibitions, um, stores, local stores, right? Local art fairs, uh, where are people already showing their work and how can I present my work in this place so I can, so people can see my artwork? Because another P that we, we didn't, we didn't, uh, exactly, at Lacuna Art Festival online platforms, exactly. Uh, another thing that I didn't say, like another P from the, the four Ps that are seven now, are people, because we need to understand where people buy our artwork, where we're looking for, and what people we we want we want to we want to connect with through our artwork. And I love it because, like all my, my students, sometimes sometimes ask me, so my so people that I want to connect with are collectors, but con collectors are not actually like uh, collectors are individuals, and all kinds, there are all kinds of collectors. So what kind of collector do you want to connect with? What is your work? And that's why we go back to products. Like what does your work talk about that has a connection with other people? That's why we need to understand the essence of our work. And what, what is the story behind it? Because there's something like very, very uh, funny in neuroscience. When I talk about an experience with my father, it doesn't matter what other experience you had with your father or your mother, you will remember that you had an experience with your father and that connects us. If, if you have a father or you don't have. So uh, there are things that are, that are similar for all people in the world. So like when we, we came here and I'm like, oh, so it's dry here. And Sarah said, yeah, here we have a heat wave, and I'm and I was like, oh, so we can we can connect because we understand that yeah, it's it's hot because we understand what's warm, what's hot. So there are things that can connect us. That's why the the importance of your story. There are things that we can connect because we understand what what the the feeling is. So place of work. Where are you going to share your work? Where are you going to sell your work? Where are you going to present your work? Being physical and online also, okay? All channels. Mm. And our last P is promotion. Promotion is how will you attract new people? Now we're going to talk about traffic. How will you promote your art? When will you communicate? And how is it done in the market? So to attract new people, what uh, usually before social network, before the internet, how did we attract new people? We went to somewhere, we went somewhere or like a store or a place where a lot of people walked, right? Where, where, where there's um, a traffic of people. So nowadays, uh, we had open studios, exactly. We had open studios. We had a lot of people. And it's not that open studios all uh, still work as a market strategy. So we're just going to understand that we have a lot of other channels right now. So we had open studio. We had something that a lot of people came and a lot of traffic with people. Nowadays, people are on the internet. So we had to be in the internet. So like um, 10 years ago, right? We had a lot of people doing sites. Now, I don't know. I don't, actually, I don't know because it's a culture in Brazil. So in Brazil, we still have websites, but uh, we have like a less traffic in the websites than we have on the Instagram accounts or the social networks. How is it working on London? Canada and Spain. Do you guys know if people do? Do you still see people accessing a lot of websites, or or do people access like social networks or other other places?
we get more uh, hits on social. Yeah, Facebook. Yeah, exactly. So if people access, it's not, remember, we also, we always need to remember, we still have 24 hours a day. It's not that people look less at sites. It's just that they have uh, the same time to look at sites than look at Instagram or Facebook. So um, they'll just shift. And it's, it's, it's funny to, to watch how people shift because even in the, the social networks, even on Facebook, we'll look at how people, um, how people are, are commenting on the platform and how people just set, um, or people are navigating the platform and it changes, it changes like in a year, in two years, and the platform will, will so there'll be another app or it'll be another feature. And it's funny to see how people um, work with it. I do not look at traffic, but I do keep an eye on the followers and comments. Exactly. No, the traffic is only, traffic is only how people are coming in, are, are coming into your, uh, into your site, into your network, into your um, gallery. So um, I, when I, I had a gallery, right? So when I had a gallery, we had like a lot of more, more people that bought like from messaging and from emails than actually in the actual gallery. So I know I had to have that channel open. There seemed to be a trend on Facebook and then Instagram and now TikTok. Yeah, it feels hard to keep up sometimes. Yeah, I know. It does, it does seem to, to, to it, it, it is hard to keep up, but you understand that actually you don't have to keep up. You just have to understand where your content needs to go and content is everything that we, we were going to, that, that you do. I'm going to understand in Brazil, no one needs to have a website only to show professionally but regular people don't even bother to check on it they go straight to social media check on one's work yeah i think um nowadays i was in it was like three years ago four years ago i don't know and i bumped with um, hans urish obrist in our basel and he was looking at when 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 an artist when he met up an artist he just looked up on instagram I think it's it's funny, right? Because the open studio, and I want to talk about what Jane said. Like we had open studios, you can use your social network as an open studio. If people like, why do people like the, the open studio? Because they see the messy, they see what is the artist, what they're creating, they see process, and you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna um, work your you're gonna work yeah you're gonna do your your social media or social network as a big studio as a, a part of your process so people will come into your studio you, you're gonna um share an experience of coming into the studio even if they're not there because i have um a theory it's not actually mine but it's it, i don't nobody ever saw ever talked about it so i think it's mine it's the remote control theory. When we had, I don't know if anybody is from that, that time, but when we didn't have remote control, we had to go to the TV and turn it off, turn it on and to choose channels. So like me and my brother and my cousins used to, used to fight, like who's going to go to the TV and change the channel? Uh, but now when, after, when you have the remote control, you don't have to go to the channel. It's the same thing as the go to the artist studios. When you have it right here in your smartphone, you don't need to, you don't need to go to, go to the artist studio. You can have everything here. And if you want to look a little closer, you will, you will, um, set up, uh, a meeting with the artists and everything. <laughs> in the UK too yeah so this is the art puzzle report for 2021 
Um, we have like new numbers now, but the art market in 2021 earned around $65 billion and online sales was not at all transitional. <laughs> it was transitional with this channel representing 33% of the sales or 37%, including the... <laughs> The 30, the 30, the 37 percent, including uh, fares, OVRs. So what what we're seeing is that the consumer. Um, oh, I'm sorry. What we're seeing is that the consumer how um, how the consumer how the clients consume it's shifting. Because when we had a, 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 um, the pandemic of COVID-19, we're still um, adjusting to it, but um, people had to buy vegetables online. So when they have to buy vegetables online, they actually, like something shifts and they understand that anything can be bought online. So even artwork, which was very difficult. We had to 2019, the 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 channel, the internet, um, online sales represented like nine percent of all channels. And when we go to the um, we go to the pandemic during 2020 and 2021, 2020 to 2021, we shipped for 37%. So people are more likely to buy online and they're more comfortable of buying online because I think people had like a lack of confidence or, or a, a lack of trust also on buying online. So the um, Hiscock reports shows that 45% of our buyers consider social media the most important channel for meeting artists. And 91% of the galleries said they actively use social media to promote their gallery. Instagram is currently the most popular platform, over 1 billion ex active user, approximately 13% of global population, and TikTok with some 680 million user, active users. I brought TikTok because, yeah, now TikTok is coming with all strength, and I think we need to look at it like with the more... Um, more carefully um, because people said that, oh, but people are from TikTok are, are very young, but it, it is the young, we, um, it is the young collectors that are buying more art that connect to artists. And I think if you are an emerging artist or you are a young artist, you have to look at the new collectors because they are coming with, um, with force of um, values and uh, reinforcing some uh, the connection between people, between uh, values of uh, environments, and they they bring a new wave with them. And with the, with the young collectors, they also influence their parents or their grandparents or their uncles. So it starts to have like a positive wave. On TikTok, and I and I think TikTok, like um, for social media, it it um, grew very fast. Also, because of the video and the entertainment within the connection, because what I'm gonna talk about, like on the on the second half of our of our talk, people don't want to see portfolios or they don't they want to connect with the artists they want to connect with the creators they want to know what you're doing and no it's not like telling your whole life or telling your whole story but connecting to your process connecting to your values connecting to what you stand for i think that is is the biggest thing about social networks so So for the consumer behavior, well, yeah, I was talking about consumer behavior. As a consequence of changes in habits and behavior pattern that had been slowly taking shape and changing 
uh, or changing had a strong acceleration during the pandemic, the digitalization of business and intensification of the use of digital channels. Uh, WGSN, which is a behavior um, report, said that 39% of consumers started shopping online and are not going to stop. I didn't put that in, but they're not going to stop. So if 39% of the people are still shopping online, we have a lot, of do, uh, a lot to do in our online networks. And so our marketing will not only be in the, uh, in the physical or in or physical or in galleries, it will be a lot to do with, with our social network and do with content. So what is a marketing strategy? I put it here. What does a marketing, how do how we set up a marketing strategy? We're going to think about um, planning. We're going to think about website. We're going to think about conversion analysis, optimization process, social media, traffic building, offline integration, and management. What does that all mean? Huh. What does this all mean? So when we talk about when we talk about social media, we talk about TikTok, WhatsApp, LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, Clubhouse. Uh, what else do we have? Facebook already put it there. Um, other social medias. When we talk about traffic building and how your work circulates online and offline. When we talk about offline integration, we're going to talk exhibitions, talks, festivals, oh, podcasts also, social media. Management, and that is how you manage all of this, what, what you use to manage all of your work, all of your uh, channels of work. Planning, we're going we're gonna to think about an editorial calendar. What's an editorial calendar? Um, it's how you deliver your content. It's how you plan your content, how you still, how you create relationships with your buyers or with your customers. Websites, we're gonna think about website, marketplaces, blogs, um, online platforms. We're gonna think about all of this and how, and how all of this, um, and all of this, all of this, website marketplaces and how your work circulates or traffics around these and how and conversion we're going to analyze how your marketing strategy are working for you so if right now like what do you what do you do for your marketing oh so i do exhibitions i apply for grants i do festivals and i have uh social media okay so what channels are working for you when are you getting more customers or getting, it's not even customers, or are you getting more invites for exhibitions or um, creating a, be a better curriculum, creating a better, a better position for yourself? So what all of these, in all of these, how many people are working or coming in on your website? How many people do you know uh, from your social networks? How are your talks, exhibitions, podcasts, and how is this traffic working for you? And the editorial calendar will also tell you where your content goes and when it goes. An optimization process is when you see, when you analyze all of this and you see, wow, if I have more people on social media, and I have, because you still have only 24 hours a day. I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk, I'm gonna say that like until we, 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 we end. You still have only 24 hours a day. So you have to optimize what you're doing. So um, in all of this, um, let me see. In all of this, we're gonna about, today in the art world, it is necessary to have a digital presence. And to have a digital presence is not only is not only is not only put your work on your social media. It's not only post your work. Is to be present because 
all of your content, all your content has to do is elevate the conscious of your audience. And what is the conscious of your audience? They have to understand what you do, what your message and connect to it and buy from it, of course. So all your content, uh, like I, I say that the artist is an actually um, very alone intellectually because only you research what you research. Even if there are other, other, other artists, like your message, your values are unique and only you know about it. So your audience won't understand and won't be in the same page. It's the basis of communication, right? You have to, if you send the message, it has to be understood by the receptor. <laughs> so always, 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 your content has to elevate the conscience of your audience. And uh, what does that mean? Your audience has to understand the process, what your value, what you value, what's your process, what's your message, and they have to connect to it in um, in a level that they they will need your work or they will need to be near you. Because when I talk about clients, I'm always not talking about people that will buy your work, but maybe they will turn turn into fans and talk about your work. So they'll be like, um, we call them, um, I don't know if, if it's right, but people that pollinators capture them. Exactly. Pollinators, people that will spread the word that will, um, maybe they won't even buy your work, but they will talk about your work and will be so, uh, and will be great fans that will attract other people to your work and we'll make like an organic traffic. So um, for this, we will we'll think about qualified followers who will become customers or fans. We'll think about metrics. What are your metrics, right? Like um, when you go to social network, do you only look at about uh, com comments and likes or do you understand like if your content are making sales they're calling you for project or exhibitions or people are commenting and saying something that really um, gets through your message. Not only, oh, it's beautiful. Like, wow, it's, it touched me in this sense. And it is exactly what you're saying. So um, we'll think about social medias also and content as a space to expand the significance of your work or expand the dialogue, the dialogue of your work. For me, Art is about a dialogue between the artist and the audience, the audience. And the audience, I don't even call it the audience. I think they're like participators of your work. So if the message gets across, you have uh, a feedback from the, the participator. And that some, somehow this will integrate your work and will integrate in your process. So if we expand this dialogue, if we get this dialogue, that is not only when a person is looking at your, your physical work, but is looking at your, your, but, oh, it's not only looking at your physical work, but looking in digitally and trying to um, and, um, expand or in, increase the conversation you have, uh, you have you have achieved like a, a great content. So also your content is going to be constant experimentation and reformulation. There is no right or wrong in content. There is not some some um, working with strategies a long time. I seen that some strategies work for some artists, uh, particular artists, and it's not the same strategy that is going to work for the same other artists. So to look at your strategy, understand what you need, what your channels, what, what you, what, where you want to go, um, will, will require some constant experimentation and reformulation. Even if your strategy is working for you sometimes, because we change, people change, our work changes, the form we communicate about it changes. And that is the, the fun of being an artist, right? There's a, a Brazilian artist that says the artist is um, 
in constant um, experimentation, in constant changing. So your content is going to change because your work's going to change and you're going to change. So, uh, So what is content exactly? Like when people, oh, so you have to produce content for social media. Content is average, absolutely in everything you do to contextualize, showcase, present, position, and sell your work on the internet or physically. So we're going to think about posts on social networks, blogs, videos, podcasts, photo photography, pictures of your work, site, um, Reels, TikTok, um, what we're going to think about, um, voice, podcast already said, um, what you, what, what you write about your work, like articles, all Can of I this. Is yeah. Um, when's too much, too much? When is too much, too much? Yeah, I, I'm very aware. I try, I, I become very more, uh, more present um in my in my postings and i'm trying to do something especially because i'm here in lanzarote for a short period of time i want to make the most of it but i'm telling everybody every day what i'm you know building something that happened yesterday or what happens tomorrow or whatever but i, I don't is is a daily post in right or <laughs> is it too much <sighs> i think um it's never too much because when you're learning something and don't don't kid yourself we're always learning when we're producing content we're always learning how we do things differently and um if you're talking about your work, you're also experimentation, experimenting um, different perspectives of your work. So you're learning and you are um, understanding how you're gonna talk about your work or how your work changes. So it's never too much. Uh, we, we have the saying here that like, um, it's not about, it's about quality. If you want quality, you have to have a quantity of errors. So if you have, if you don't have a quantity of errors, you don't, you can't see the quality. So too much is never too much. Now you have to understand where, uh, you have to understand where you wanna go with it. Like um, sometimes I have something in my, because people said that oh you have to show your life and everything and sometimes i have something that happens in my personal life that has nothing to do with what i do so that won't be it. that's too much right it, it it's it's not content it's just uh, it's just me talking <laughs> so not not that that is not content but sometimes things that happen in my life give me ideas gave give me ideas for the work. So that will be, that won't be too much. So knowing, uh, understanding your strategic planning, right? Understanding your message, what you want to put in there. Uh, it's never going to be too much, but you have to allow yourself to experiment also. Yeah. Does not share my personal stuff. Exactly. It feels weird to constantly post career stuff. <coughs> it feels weird. Mm. Maybe it feels weird at first, but then after after a, a <laughs> after I I think it feels weird at first. But then after you see everybody doing it, or you you can actually not only our career stuff, you can you can you can post your story also. You can post things that um, 
that that the experiment about your work, the experience, uh, experiences is in your life that actually will 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 materialize in ideas or references that will um, sometimes go um, uh, go through your work. So if um, let's say that you're looking, you're now right now. You're watching, you're watching this talk about social networks and it's working if, so this is like personal, right? It could be work, but it's personal. So if you post it like, oh, today I went to this, this um, to Lacuna Festival to see the talk about social networks and everybody, and it gave me an idea to make my work, like make another kind of work. It will, it will, it, 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 it actually, it says more about how you, how you create a narrative, how you sew, sew it together, how all your experiences, how you make like this Frankenstein of all your experiences. It's not only about where your work is or what your process is, but things that happen that, that you're, you look through it that you pay attention and it'll make uh, and it'll make your work another and will make your work uh, give another direction to your work or or spiral your work some way I think that separation work out personal account for my own stuff and professional account for this type of account yeah, easy to say, not easy to do it, right? Not easy to balance the man. No, it's not easy. It's not easy to, to balance everything. That's why you have to have quantity. When you have quantity, it's the same, it's the same thing of the, the coffee. Always remember the coffee. When you don't know how much, how much sugar you take in your coffee or how much milk, you're going to put it in and it's going to be too sweet. Then the next time you're going to take it out and it's going to be to um, not sweet how do you say it the other it's gonna be too bitter thank you it's gonna be too bitter so you're just gonna understand how much of of sugar you're gonna put it in the coffee you're gonna put the coffee in. you're gonna put in the coffee um and that's how we know when too much is not too much we're gonna experiment Okay, got it. So, your content, oh, I already said that. Uh, so why should you create, you create content? When we create content, we generate trust in our follower and in our customers, we get loyalty of customers and agents. We facilitate the main uh, and man, maintain, I don't know why it's right, written like that, maintain a bond of your, audience, of your audience that makes them identified with your work and share their ideas. We attract new customers, new agents. We strengthen our brands and strengthen our positioning of your work. We differentiate your work from others and keep it visible in the market. Generate a wealth of accessible and diverse information and builds authority. And our major goal is, safe, is always to raise awareness of our audience until they are ready to buy from you. So why we should create content? Because it creates authority. People position your work. It's you people present your work. It's extends it's extend expands our dialogues with our customers, with other agents from the circuit, and from and attract new customers always. Because if you're generating content in social network or your your email or in social networks email or other other social networks you are um, expanding uh, the circle of people that could look at your work. You're making another channel 
available for your work, not only physical, not only in the studio, but in other places where people can access your work, connect to it, and buy it if 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 it if it pleases them. So our major goal always is raise awareness of your audience until they're ready to buy from you. Always remember that always that we, when we think about content, we're also thinking about <coughs> or about generating conscious of your work and your message, what your work is. So where should you publicize your content? Because this is, okay, so if content is everything that I do, where should I publicize my content? Choose a channel that works for you, that works best for you. I'm not gonna tell, tell you that you have to be on Instagram. I'm not gonna tell you that you have to be on TikTok, even though I think you should be on Instagram or TikTok. Um, I'm not gonna tell you you're gonna be on Facebook, but I'm gonna tell you, choose a channel that works for you. If you have a mailing list that you connect with your, you connect with your audience, have a mailing list. If you have YouTube, oh, YouTube is another social. If you have YouTube or you have um, some other, 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 other networks, other social medias or other sites, choose a channel that works best for you and publicize your content. If you have a blog, if you have a website. Uh, question, should we be on every channel or just select a few ones? <coughs> I think. You, choose, you have to choose one beforehand and then understand how it works. And that will take like two, three years for you to understand how actually a channel works and understand what, and this is why we have the analysis and understand how are people looking for you? If people are looking for you. If you, you're on Instagram or Facebook and people are looking for you on YouTube, you're on the wrong channel. How am I going to know? You're going to know. If you're doing, if you're publicizing your content, if you're producing content, you understand how people get to your content and how they come into your content. So um, every every network also, like every social network, is gonna be good in something. Is gonna be a strength. It's gonna have a certain strength. So if we like Pinterest, oh, I, I didn't even say Pinterest. Pinterest is um, is an inspire inspired network right people don't talk on pinterest they they, they, also, they talk, don't talk on pinterest they um sometimes a lot of architects a lot of people a lot of design people are in pinterest to look to inspire themselves and actually to buy things instagram is a social network or uh what does it mean social networks they people want to talk people want to be part of the conversation TikTok is a, is a, is a, what do they call it? They call it like, um, it's, it's like a movie, like it's a fast and it's, it's action. So it's going to be more, more, um, dynamic. So Facebook, uh, people are going to have, we're going to have conversation. They're going to be blogs, LinkedIn, people are more, uh, professional. So probably it will be um, contacts with um, museums or curators or something. So each, each network will have um, a form of preparing and showing the content. <coughs> what I think we understand that, now we understand that Instagram <coughs> is the biggest network used on the art market. So I would have an Instagram, but <coughs> a lot of people go on Facebook still. So. Um, I think that you should choose what social media you work with, what channel you want to work with, <coughs> and put your content inside because, <coughs> sorry, just a minute. Because if you're looking at a lot of, uh, if you're doing like a lot of social media, you, um, at the end of the day, you're just, you understand that you're not doing anything productive. 
So it's better if you see the um, if you see it happening. You see you producing you producing producing content and people commenting on it and uh, in generating value. Then actually. <coughs> doing a lot of social media and not seeing anything going forward so i would i would uh right i would choose one channel actually choose one social media and i always always do email still because email we connect uh directly to the person directly to our clients so i i don't expect my client to be on social media all the time so i think that we have to have a direct a direct um, channel with our clients and one that's um, actually there are a lot of channels right because there's the studio there's the physical there's the social media where, where we interact with other people and the direct the direct channel with our clients I think that we have to have three so you choose your three <coughs> is it going to be like phone calls is it going to be emails your physical what what place is it going to be is it going to be a gallery a studio uh, a marketplace and a channel of social network where you can meet other people i think it's like i would choose three channels but for social media only one at first then when you when you when you get um when you learn how to produce content like with with another velocity then you can open to other to other medias i think social medias so choose a channel that works best for you and the best the best works for you well the best works for you and produce content there social networks websites blogs newsletter newsletters is a thing that actually really works still i i'm, I'm still like very very um surprised because i thought nobody read newsletters but people read newsletters they like newsletters it works very nicely for artists and galleries um a beautiful design is useless if the language or content of the publication is not suitable for the audience or the channel <coughs> if you're right too much on instagram it's not that not all people are going to read it but it's not uh um a channel for you to write if you want to write you write an email if you want to write you go to linkedin you go to a blog you go to a website but you're not going to write on tiktok or Instagram, maybe Facebook. So if you're getting just if you're just getting started, a good strategy is to turn followers into contacts. So if you have lots of followers, like we know that social net or social media is uh, a rentable space, right? Like it's not ours. We we don't we don't control it. So it's good. <coughs> to take our followers and turn them into context. How do we do that? You can open a, a Google form or sometime put in your link in the, bio, in, the, in the bio and ask people to subscribe. So they'll get the newsletter, they'll get, um, they'll get emails from you, they'll get all your, new, all your new exhibitions, all your invites or promotions that you're doing. That is a very, a good strategy uh and for those who have a base of context base of context like a mailing list probably needs to start a relationship with your registered customer if you only tell your customers when you're exhibiting when you get a brand when you get a price and you're not actually making connecting with them and making a relationship with them it's probably they won't be there um they won't buy from you again so we have to understand that we have these base, we have people that come coming in and we have people that were ready, our clients that are ready, our, our customers, and we have to make a relationship work with them and connect with them. Um, I would say like from 15 to 15 days. So if you're not selling, sending a newsletter or sending, uh, how, how are you? Remember the people now want to talk. People don't want more information. They have a lot of information. They want to connect and talk to the, the artist. They want to know what you guys are thinking, what, what 
what is your next exhibition what's your next process what are you researching um what are are your references what are they what are you talking about what um what others what are other artists are you studying what other artists are 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 you communicating with so all of this is content and all of this can be shared with your base of context with your mailing list with your um followers and you can turn followers into contacts could i please ask a question of course it's okay. about the the newsletter or the email because we have this is about me as the organizer of the festival the other comments that i've been making are about me as an artist but this is very specific i guess to the festival so it will be relevant to anyone else who has galleries or events so we have what you would think would be an invested audience because they are part of the art festival and we send out um, information via newsletters, but then have thought like, I know that people don't read the information because I then get like weeks later or days later or the same day questions about things that are in that. And so I don't know how to make stuff more engaging so that I can get the information across. Because obviously it must be really frustrating for the artists to feel like they don't have the information. And it's frustrating for us to feel like, well, we've given you the information. <laughs> you know, so there's some sort of disconnect there. Um, probably, I don't know what service you use. Um, I don't know if they receive all the emails. I receive all your emails, so. <laughs> um, I don't know if they received all the emails. So probably check out what, what uh, platform you're using but um i think it can be more fun um people don't read informational emails they read emails that will give them something okay so in the end or in the beginning like to have like it's it's very it's very silly but like to have like a gif or something of some sort or have like humor got to it and people read and and um and laugh about it or have like images or something it it it's um we say that it breaks communication right because if we meet we if you have the same communication like okay so this is the date this is the event this is the same communication people tend to see as the same information okay that makes sense so yeah, so we have to like break information. So we have to like, uh, like when we're, when we're talking here, like I'm, I'm presenting here, it's not all the time that I'm talking in the same, in the same tone. Yeah, it's not. So, uh, when, and that's when, when Jane said the, uh, the thing that when you look eye to eye and you can connect to the people, we have to understand how to do that through our writing or through our emails or through, so it can be like a picture or some sort or like a title different or a, a humor or a question that they have to answer and they 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 will open the email so it's like um we call it like it's copywriting right it's how we have a persuasive writing for people to get to the end of the email and probably you have to break the communication it won't be like so artists that are that are presenting on that are exhibiting on the fourth floor i'm just like or fourth floor we'll have this 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 is they don't read you have to have like some some punch to it some something that uh this information you won't you won't you won't want to miss so they will, it, it it inspires curiosity are you we thank have you for that you're welcome. And we have to do that not only for the galleries or the artists, because we have, when we have galleries or, or festivals, we have like two clients, right? Two customers, which are the, the artists and the people that are coming through it. So we have to create a narrative that uh, involves and engages the artists and the people that are coming from, um, from the other side. And sometimes it's, um, it's not it's not difficult but it's 
overwhelming because it's it's a lot of narratives but um it, it gets fun sometimes <coughs> yeah so this the gimmick that you add make the person remember maybe exactly um in social media like when we talk about um like posting on instagram or i'm, I'm going to talk about instagram but when we post on instagram or linkedin or anything we have to change the way we we post it like so if sometimes you post if every time you post a picture a static picture you will need to post a video after so you break the type the type of communication people won't be expecting it and when we don't expect it we generate curiosity and the person gets engages more or because it's it's different or because um if, or because it's different or because she didn't see it or because uh, maybe she likes other things better and we're all complex and different people and some people respond better to text some people respond better to video some people respond better to photo actually let's let's make a, a poll here um who in social media what, what do you like more about social media? Do you like photo? Um, you can respond on, on the chat. So we're gonna say the photo, video, reels, uh, story, um, blogging. What, what do you like it best? Photos. Oh, that was awesome. <laughs> Who else? Photos. No, not everybody's gonna go, like but oh videos. Photos. So everybody likes photos. <laughs> We're used to it, right? And some videos. Yeah. Yeah. So okay. So we're like all of us have different, uh, sometimes videos too. So we like photos and videos, right? So in videos, do you like um, videos with music or uh, videos with music or with um, people talking? Oh, that's nice, Jane, yeah. I think you get the hang the hang of it also. People working. Oh, you like people working. Uh, good. What else do you like in videos? Do you like the process? You know, process. Yeah, exactly. So with like in here, all of us like different things. Oh, talking I prefer, but I know music gets more views if you use popular songs. Yeah, but yeah, it does. It does get more, more views, but what kind of views do we want right we want qualified qualified followers we don't want any followers we want qualified followers so each of us like one thing right on, on social media so people all your followers some 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 followers will like videos best some followers will like uh, photos best some some followers will like have you guys ever seen that one that there's, there's nothing and there's just a person talking so some, some people are going to like that. Some people are going to like to read. Some people won't have time to read. And it's not like, even if I like to read, maybe sometimes I'm in the car and I can't read it. And so I won't, I, I, it will be better for me to hear it. So um, in the, in the, in, in, in people's life, eh, everything's going to change. So when we change the communication, we grab attention. We grab attention and we inspire curiosity. But more followers, even if not qualified, wouldn't be a factor of attraction. So um, I, I don't think so. I think that you have to have followers that will buy from you, that will have, buy your idea, right? When, when I say buy, buy your idea, buy your, your message, understand your message connects to you. Because if they're not, um, if they, they don't connect to it, the algorithm 
will show to people that don't connect to it also because we didn't stay about the algorithm. So the algorithm is gonna work um, from the type of follower you have. If you don't have qualified followers that connect to you, you probably get more followers that won't connect to you. And then you're producing content for no one, just for a number of likes, <coughs> a number of followers, I'm sorry. So producing content, starting point, starting point. Good market and audience research. Guys, there, 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 um, there's, oh, there's no way that you can produce content without knowing your market or your audience or know what you want from your audience. And know your audience is like knowing what you value, actually, because you know you're going to connect to people that value what you value, that connect to your message, and that are interested in your work. So in audience research, maybe if you have like a few friends that like your work or clients that really like your work, you could start from there. You could start like to understand what they like and what they would like to see because they are their customers. So you can start with that. A good strategic planning, that's what, I, that's what I teach. So a good strategic planning is to know where you wanna go, where you are and where you wanna go. Because if you know where you are and where you wanna go, you can understand all the steps that you have to make to get to the point you wanna be with, you wanna be. Uh, only you will be able to talk, <coughs> only then you will be able to talk to your audience. Only when you know what your market or the audience wants and where, where you are and where you want to go, you'll be able to understand how to communicate, what to post, how to post it, what to say. And strat strategically speaking, the secret is to ensure that your communication is reaching the right audience at the ideal time and in the way you want it. And that is very um, challenging because we won't know if our, if our communication is reaching the right audience in the ideal time and the way we want it if we don't have volume, if we don't understand how others, how, um, if we don't understand how many, how many times we can talk about the same thing from different perspectives. The strategy is yours to create and adjust it as you feel as you feel as you feel it as you feel in the in the path. So create your strategy and adjust it as you see as you see fit. <coughs> so what's an editorial? uh when you're producing content what's an editorial do you do you use this word editorial for for producing content yeah what is your yes, editorial? okay word. so if you what is an editorial what do you what are you gonna think about when you think about your editorial uh content directing your ideas and causes which ties all your content together so what do you believe in what do you stand for what are your causes and who do you speak to? This is going to be the base or the essence of all your contents. In, um, in terms, in larger terms, it's what is your message? If you had like uh, a truck sign, right? A truck sign where you had to have one message, what would that be? What is, what is, what, what ties everything together? What is the essence of your work? What do you want to put? What changes the status quo? What do you want to put in the world? That's what your editorial is going to be. Your editorial calendar is a strategic organization of the content placed in a specific order and frequency to increase your audience awareness. No content can be random. You cannot, all your content has to have an objective. 
you have to know what you want with that specific content. Uh, so for that, we're going to work with five pillars, okay? So write down the five pillars of what you stand for. Like if you had five pillars of your work, oh, I don't have five pillars, um, choose three. Three, three bases where your work is going to stand in. Like when you, when you make a house, when you have like a plan, like what is going to be the base of, of your house? What is going to be, um, what ties it together? So your story, the work of your, the story of your work, the theme or concept of your work, your overall vision, your philosophy of art, of art making, or your work's origin. This, when you think about the five pillars, you can think also about your story, your bio, and your statement. What is your message? And when you think about these five pillars, look, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to tell you a trick. Think about five pillars. And these five pillars are going to be your editorial content. And we have five days a week, right? We have seven, but we have five days a week. Each day, you're going to be, you're going to make a content based on your five pillars. So if you get the story of your work, um, the story of your work. Each Monday, you're going to work, you're going to tell about the story of your work, of different works, of different uh, pieces. Um, if the second one is the concept, so each Tuesday, you're going to talk about concept. Wednesday, you can show your work, your process. Um, Thursday, you can show your references, where you came from, where your origin of your work. Friday, you can talk about philosophy or your idea or your message. But, okay, so uh, I'm going to do this every week. Yeah, you're going to do this every week in different levels, in different perspectives, in different forms of posting, of communicating, of because I can tell my story in various, various forms. And I can tell, each day I can talk a, a part of a story. And each day I can talk about an idea of a work or different ideas of different works. So choose your five pillars, write them down, and you have an editorial, an editorial calendar, editorial content, an editorial calendar. You just have to, you just need to, to put it where you're going to, where you're going to, which day. <laughs> it's just a feel in the blanks. Exactly. Like choose five pillars and you have five days of contents. Exactly. So um, like I'm going to, uh, we, we did a gallery the other day, right? So a gallery and she had like new artists from the uh, Center East of Brazil. So new artists from Center East of Brazil, that was the specialization. They had secondary market. They had the talks. They had um, uh, one day that we, we had like tips from the gallery. And the other day was a social proof. What social proof? When you, when you prove something, like you, you, make, you make pictures of... Social proof is when you prove that you exist in society. So we have like um, pictures of uh, artists in museums. So each day, like on every Monday, they put the pictures of uh, the... They presented a new artist, an emerging artist from centuries of Brazil. The Tuesday, they had the tips, right? Tips of the gallery from how to make, um, how to frame your work or how to maintain your work or whatever. Wednesday, they had a um, secondary market where they showed their secondary market. Thursday, they had um, the talks. They always had like talks with artists or open, uh, open talks in the gallery. And Friday, they had social proof. So each day, 
they had something and all the weeks, all, all weeks, they, they engaged and they decided this. So with your five pillars, you can understand how you can um, produce content that is not actually um, hard to produce. And you can understand like you have, you can make your editorial calendar. <coughs> <laughs> yeah you can plan it it's easy you just need five pillars so why is instagram now i'm gonna just talk about instagram a little bit benefits of instagram remember when, when we we saw that the hiscox and the 90 percent of the art market is in instagram so i am going to talk about instagram um i think you can have another 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 other channels, yes, but I think Instagram nowadays um, have more visibility for the art market. I don't know how long it's going to be, but now it's it's going to be like that. So, um, benefits of Instagram: it's free. Artists can control. Oh, I'm sorry. I okay. It's free. Artists can control their online presence, showing their work, interacting with a larger audience and selling. Lots of artists have sell, sold on Instagram, all, of course, with marketplaces also, but uh, all the selling, the connection, it comes from the Instagram, it comes from their everyday life, it comes from the process, it comes from uh, interacting with, with customers and clients. It puts you in a space that already has a thousands of collectors and galleries. Yeah, it's already, remember the traffic, remember to stay in places where people are, are already walking or uh, trafficking. So it puts you in a place where it already exists, the traffic already exists. Buyers can interact with artists um, via direct message and shop there. And artists can have following a following that will be updated on their project. Can, I'm sorry, can update the followers on their project. <laughs> and it's free to publicize your work. Of course, you can pay, but it's free. It's still free. And if you do it right, uh, you'll see that people will, will you'll get uh, a large audience if you do it constantly also, because um, the thing on social media or marketing, it's, it's a constant construction. We can't think that it's, oh, oh so I'm going to post it here, like I'm going to have a, an exhibition and post it here once and I never have to post again. No, it's a construction. It's constantly, every day, like artwork also. If you stop painting or you stop photographing, you won't get the hand of, the hang of it. So it's constant. It's a construction. It's production. So artists that have um, social, oh, I'm sorry. Artists that have Instagram, I got like a few uh, pages that I think it's very nice because I remember that when, uh, when Cindy Sherman, when Instagram came, Anthony Sharma said that Instagram was uh, was uh, silly and she would never go on Instagram. And now she has a whole work of Instagram. Like if you go to Cindy Sherman's pages, it's very, very funny. Marilyn Minter, um, Carol Walker, Martin Creed Banksy, uh, I think Cobra. I think there's a lot of Tyler. There are people that actually were Ai Weiwei, people that, uh, Takashi, people that work with Instagram as a form of publicizing their work. And Jeff Koons, Amy Hurst, they don't actually need to publicize their work. They're already, they're already very big, but they still are there each day. Even Damien Hurst is so funny because Damien Hurst is like, every day he posts and he has like 2,000 million followers. I don't know how, uh, 200 million followers. I don't know how many followers that he has. Kara Walker also, Cindy Sherman also, but they're always there. And if they're already big and they still have a need to be on Instagram and publicize their work, who are we to not be there, right? So um, this, you're gonna, you, you guys are gonna get this, this. So you can, after look at all the, all the, 
all the the pages and look what they see what they how how they produce content and how they they work with the with the several uh, forms of producing content like reels or videos or photos and how how they 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 change the communication there there are a lot of brazilians also here because well <laughs> So um, to end actually our, our workshop, actually we have questions. I think we're, I'm gonna still be here, but I brought seven easy strategies for you to apply today and get started for you to apply today and start getting noticed by your work all on Instagram. Okay, so <coughs> one. You're gonna write, what does everyone ask you about? Uh, what does everyone ask you about your work? Actually, it, it's, it's, it's false. What does your, everyone ask you about your work? You're gonna list three things people don't know about your work. So you're gonna list these three things and you're gonna make a post talking about it or talking about it or story or any talking about it or showing people what they don't know about their work or what they don't know about your work. Um, three things, some, some cust some clients, some curator once asked you about your work, list three things people don't know and, and make a post of it. You see, you can make it three posts. Actually, three, three posts actually. You'll see that people, uh, how people are gonna comment. That will be very, very fun to 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 watch how people uh, imagine your work or what they thought about your work when you you bring these curiosities to them. Um, select three great books on the subject that you work with underline the best ideas and share it with your followers. <coughs> so you're gonna get, get three books of what you study, of what your research or what your work is about. Uh, it can be books by other artists or by philosophers or just by scientists or whatever. And you're gonna underline the best ideas and you're gonna talk about it or you're just gonna show in your, in your social medias. Uh, just a minute, because um, the the chat, the chat, but went, like got big for me. Let me, ah. Did I stop, did I stop sharing? Just a minute. Yeah, it's, it's stopped sharing for the minute. Why? Ah, just a minute. I don't know, it like closed everything. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, don't worry. The, the, whilst you sort that out, I'm gonna read this question from Deborah out, which says, um, should I get a new Instagram account? I have one but have just put up photos of the work with no discussion? That's a good question. Um, why should you get, I don't, I don't understand why you should get another Instagram account. I think you should just put the description of your work. You can, you don't need another, another, another Instagram account for that. You can just change from where you are right now. People don't look at the other, actually people do look at it, but um, like you can, it, that's the, the fun of experimenting and changing. You can always change or you can always arch archive a, a post or you can always like make a description where you didn't, where you didn't have a description. So I don't think you need a new Instagram account. You just, maybe you can, you can try to experiment other things. Yeah, I understand why Deborah's asking that because particularly on Instagram with um, not so much artists, but with celebrities, models, musicians, you know, they seem to 
every now and then just kind of like shut down an account and open a new one or delete everything and kind of start fresh and and I always think like is that a is that a way of kind of capturing people people are like oh like what's happening is that why they're doing it or I don't know I just I've noticed it as kind of almost like a trend you know that this kind of erasing and re restarting it's actually a strategy yeah it is <laughs> it is it's like um everything's gonna change so people like capture the attention like oh my gosh everything's gonna change they're they they they, they erased everything they actually archive it because you can't erase an Instagram because you get punished for it, but you archive it. Um, but you can always do that. You can always do, you can always archive, archive uh, a post or you can always change. And it's very difficult. I don't know if you guys do that. I actually do that when I'm like stalking someone, but, but I don't know if you guys actually do that. Like go back like lots of posts. You just like you 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 stay from there from the nine other other posts and you you just um keep following. So I don't know. I think you can always change, but if you feel if you feel um if you're gonna feel more um should I get it? I have I have one, but just put up photos of work on with no discussion. So repost it. Yeah, you can repost the work or you can you can edit. You can ed edit your post. But I think you can repost. And and there's a lot of ways to, of reposting uh reposting a work, right? You can repost your work as a video, you can repost your work as a detail, you can repost the work as the same picture after a while. I don't think that um uh, you should be um so because it's like we know what's happening because we are in in our we are produ we're producing content we know what we already posted but the audience sometimes they forget so we can repost things like in the, we know that you know it's a it's a good example when you're gonna do um when, when you're gonna do a show or an exhibition and people um you can you have to you send the invites like 15 days before and after you send the invite like 10 days before and even though people don't remember you have to remember them on the day or the day the day before so uh, it's like that the audience forgets they they don't remember what they seen they don't remember if they had a discussion or no so or, or not so you can um take this to your advantage but yeah it is uh, sarah it is a strategy to to erase everything I mean, okay. I didn't realize that it wasn't like a total erasure. I didn't realize you could archive on Instagram. So that is something like that's an immediate action to go and look at. So I can um, see if I ever need to employ that strategy. Oh, it's archive. It's very nice. What I do when I archive a post, like um, what I do is I. Um, Sometimes, like well, I'm gonna go on a, a live post, a, a live um, to a live, um, a live exactly on Instagram. So the day before, I announce the live, but um, after I when I save the live, I archive the the invite and put the invite in the cover of the live. Did I? Did yeah, I that makes sense. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, because then it, it won't be like two invites, right? So yeah. we just I, I have the invite and put the the, the invites in uh, on the cover of the of the live. I think it it works. I, yeah. I, so you I, don't I, get like repeats, isn't it? Exactly. Exactly. It doesn't look like the same thing, right? Yeah. Okay. So back here now you can see me presents. minute so select three it doesn't need to be greatest books just three books <laughs> on the subject that you work on underline the best ideas and post it 
and talk about your references. Oh, now it's it's coming in. Okay, wait for it. So Andrea said, I'm reposting some works, but in different layout. The one which brought more interest was an animation of one post, some, something like four times more interest. Oh, that's nice. That's nice that you're analyzing it and it, you're looking at it and knowing what, what, what works for you. So watch and model three great artists. I don't know where it puts greatest, great artists that you admire. So on the list that I gave you, you're gonna choose like three artists that you admire and you're gonna model them. You're gonna see, well, when Damien Hurst, you like doing the uh, reverse engineering, when Damien Hurst like um, video uh, films, him processing or working on his on his studio what is he doing and then you're going to model it and maybe you're going to just make a video of you film film yourself in the studio or maybe you're going to film yourself um um putting a, a work in an exhibition you're going to understand what he is doing there and you're going to model it so watch three artists that you like like three artists that are good on social media and model them Start understanding what are their pillars, what are they working on, and what uh, what posts are are being commented on, on what people are liking, and model it. Like see like an artist. Is it that's a, a book, right? See like an artist. It is. <laughs> it is. It's a really good book as well. Yeah, exactly. So still like an artist. <laughs> Four. Write an article create or create a free online exhibition or portfolio for people to access. Okay, so we're gonna, <coughs> this one, we're gonna do it like this. Or you're gonna write something about your work. If you're not so so good on writing or anything, you're gonna create a portfolio, an online portfolio, and then you're gonna put it in your bio and you're gonna post something about it, or you're gonna create a free exhibition online where people can visit it and it can be just a portfolio or it can be anything. And you're gonna announce it and see how many people talk about it or you're gonna, or you're gonna post it. Uh, and, and it can be posted on video, it can be posted as a photo, it can be posted as an animation, it can be posted as just an invite and, and something written on it. And you're gonna see that people are gonna um, interact more with your work. So write an article or create a free exhibition or a portfolio where you can or in post it that people can access. Five, take photos and create social proof. I know that we are not uh, the generation of exhibition and taking a lots of photo, but you need to take photos of your studio. You need to take photos of you working. You need to film your process. You have to be there. People want to see you. So it can be like, it can be like working on a video or working on in being like, you're not actually looking at the camera. It can be like artistic or anything. Um, call a, a friend, a photographer, or an artist friend and tell them that you need pictures taken. And it can be like a, a, a fun photo shoot. And then post it. People will like to see the person, um, the artist, the, the creator of the art. So post, post your photos, post your, post your, Post your photos, post your process, take photos, create social proof. And it can be also like uh, your work in the studio or your work in uh, exhibition, your work in a house of a client or anything. Post it. Show people your exhibition or people who buy your work. So <clears throat> if you never had a show or you never had an exhibition, you're going to show people that bought your work or your, your work on the studio. People like to see people, um, people that bought your work or your work is somewhere else that is not in the studio. Oh, but I don't have anywhere else. Go to your house, put your work 
and some like buy uh, a lamp or something that will see the measure like the the size of the work because sometimes we just take the picture of only the work and we don't see the size of it and people don't are even if we put the measures on it people won't actually know the proportion so put something right it can be a plant it can be a lamp anything and take a picture and show it people like to see the dimension of your work and seven no no And seven, interact with profiles that you like. That is the best strategy. Remember that I told you about our algorithm. So the algorithm is like, um, he understand what uh, if, if we go to, to profiles that we like and we interact with them, we comment them. It's not just like comment emoji, but comment something that has to do with the photo or has to do with the video. People will, will start looking at you and will start interacting with you also. And with that algorithm working in your, um, in your favor, the people that probably like that that artist or like that person or like that agent like the curator will start looking at you also and will start um engaging with you so this is a strategy that really works and even the person that that you like will start knowing you looking at your comments seeing that they have actually uh, some consistency and try to interact with you also so um the seventh strategy is a strategy that works really good and actually all the seven strategies and if you put if you guys just go and practice it right now you understand how um making content that content is actually really fun and it can be uh revigorating for your work for to expand this dialogue to understand a lot more about your audience and about yourself and about your work also so this was the presentation of course of course we can talk about like there are a lot of other things a lot of other social networks and the thing i just wanted to have like a brief uh not be too extended so nobody will be <clears throat> and nobody will be bored so i have brought here a lot of uh, uh, strategies, a lot of things, uh, things to think about, the pillars of content, where you have to be. But the most important thing about content or marketing is to create a strategy that works for you and experiment with it. Like if you have only one strategy, try to, to get out of the box and try to, to think of other things that you can do. Try to look at other artists, see what they do and see what is a good content for you. What, what would you like to see? and what, how, how, how you can bring this to connect to your customers and to your clients. So I'd say the best active, our best active is time. Thank you so much for spending your time with me and I'll open for questions now. Oh, good. Oh, and if you guys wanna, if, if there's anything actually I put here, I don't know, Sarah Jane, I don't know if I, I put my email and my Instagram profile. So if you guys need anything, like have any questions after you can, you can, uh, you can reach out also. I don't know if, uh, if it's gonna, it, it helps, but that's what I have for today. I think uh, it's a lot of content. I know it's like a lot of things, but in, in small, small things, but if you see it um, as a, a whole, I think you can understand how you can produce content, not die from it and have fun with it also. I think the thing that well, there's two things I'm going to take away. First is the archiving, love that. And second is the is the fact that you can plan this. So it's like not a scattergun approach that takes all of your time, but actually it's really directed and concise and it's probably going to be more effective. Like that, it makes total sense, but it's not actually something that I had thought of 
for myself I think when I've been doing stuff for the festivals I've been more specific like what's the point of this post how is it going to work like who am I trying to reach with it I've not applied that same principle to myself as an artist so um, yes that's been really helpful for me um, so the floor is open for questions. If you don't want to speak, you can type in the chat and I'm happy to read those out. If we just give maybe a little bit of space so you can have a think if there's anything you want to ask. Um, Sarah, I, I've been, I've been, I have observing, have been observing artists and it's really funny when artists are working at festivals or working at a group, they can be very objective and know exactly what they're going to post because, oh, it's more institutional and sometimes, and as an artist, you have to do that because of course you have, you want to engage, you want to show what your, what your values, you want to connect, you want to, and it's actually uh, elucidating, elucidating, right, to know that exactly. So as an artist, I have to think as an institution also. I have to think how how are my objectives or how I want to communicate with my audience. Wow. And so, yeah, that's what I do. <laughs> yeah, it's just thinking of you, not as an individual, but like you say, more as an institution. Like it's it's just getting your head around that, isn't it? And it's so much easier to do that when it is when it is an institution, you know, when it is a festival or gallery or, or whatever, and it's not just one person. Yeah. Can I just say, yeah, it's absolutely right because uh, 2019 I came to the first Lacuna Festival and I was driven uh, from it. Just everything just took off and I knew where I was going. Um, and I, because of the festivals, thank you so much. I keep choking on about it there and there. But um, I am focused, I am driven and I have a purpose and a point but when it was lockdown I didn't have a purpose and I didn't have a point um or I thought I didn't I think it's a state of mind as well sometimes uh, yeah um so now I'm focused I'm on it I'm doing it uh, and hopefully when I go back home I can keep that motivation and secondly, thank you for today. I've, I've really have learned some really valuable directions. Um, I've already joined you on Insta and I've made a little, a couple of little posts while we've been on. But yeah, I, I'm going to, as Sarah said, organise myself. I can see the principle in front of me and, and it, you know, I can do that. Why can't I, you know, why didn't I do it before? <laughs> but thank you, darling. Thank you. Thank you. I think, yeah, exactly. When we see it, uh, content as, that's why I think we, we, we look at the little, right? Look at a, the, the next post, look at what, what am I going to post? And when we look at it content, like, okay, so I, I already produced content. I just have to plan how I'm going to, how I'm going to show it. It, 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 it's, it's easier. It's, I think it's lighter actually. <laughs> Thank you so much for being here also, Jane. And there's a new comment in the chat from Andrea uh, saying, at each one of the seven topics you just showed, new ideas were coming. So stimulating. Thanks, Andrea, for that. Yeah, thank you. Exactly. I think when you, when you start, um, I'm actually... Um, I'm I'm a I'm a ballet dancer, right? I'm but my first um, graduation was uh, ballet. So I think when you start moving, you can't stop. So it's just that when you just understand that the movement is 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 giving you clarity and giving you other movements or giving you other strategies, it it's uh, it's stimulating. Exactly. Thanks, Andrea. I think that something I've noticed um, like over my career as an artist is that because you're in it, it's very difficult to take this kind of really logical approach and to break things down. And what I feel you've done for us all today, Adriana, is you've broken things down in a way that is manageable and that artists can take away and implement straight away. Um, and I, yeah, I can't thank you enough for delivering this workshop as part of the festivals. 
um, and for sharing all of this valuable information. I'm I'm blown away by it all. Thank you. And we have claps in the chat. Thank you, artists. Claps in the chat for Adriana. <laughs> Is there anything else that anyone would like to um, ask or comment on before we sign off? Um, me, no, I would really like, um, I, I thank you for the invite. It's an honor to be here with so many um, talented artists and I've, I've been, I've been like watching the, the other uh, events and everything. So I'm very honored to be here and very happy also. Thank you for the space. Thank you for the audience. Thank you for the, the invite. That's all. Thank you so much. Um, so this recording will be available on the Lacuna Festival's YouTube channel as soon as um, we can get it uploaded. So if not today, that'll be tomorrow. Um, and I'm going to be sending out the presentation that Adriana has shared with us today as well so that you can go over that in your own time um, and digest that and you can follow that step-by-step -step plan that she's provided for us. Uh, so once again, thanks, Adriana, and goodbye, everyone. Hope to see you at another event soon. Thank you. Bye.